Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ivan Mesa. Before starting, I would like to thank the organizers for giving the chance to present this work uh, in this fashion. This is a continuation of Enrique's talk. Uh, this is a very technical uh, talk, uh, and I will gonna explain uh, how we are building the hypertextual network of the Inter-American Court of Human Rights cases. Um, um, it is common that in legal documents there are these phrases which mention other documents. Uh, this is done for sake of the legal argument and it could be that these mentions uh, refer to different uh, legal different documents, or it could be that these uh, mentions, uh, even though they are two different mentions, they will refer to the same legal document. Uh, what we are interesting, interesting to doing is in to uh, identify these phrases, identify the documents they mention, and we are going to assume a directionality in this relation uh, we are going to say that the mentioned document is influencing the argument, the legal argument in the original, on my original document. And so with this we want to build a network in which uh, we have nodes which are original, which are, which represents our original documents. We have nodes which represented, represents the mentioned documents and um, we are going to establish a link between this node. If this node mentions this node, we are going to say this uh, node is this document is influencing this uh, this other node. And in case one document is mentioned more than the other ones, we are going to uh, make a stronger link, and this is going to be shown um, by a stronger link, a thicker link these two nodes. In particular, we want to do this for the Inter-American Court of Human Rights ca right, right cases. Uh, the Inter-American Court of Human Rights is composed by 23 countries. Uh, there were originally 25, but two of them have abandoned the, the court, Trinidad and Tobago and Venezuela. Uh, there are, currently, there are 352 judgment of verdicts from the from the court this has this uh, is from 90, 1987 to march of this year uh, in total 22 countries have been sued in the in the court uh, it's only three countries that they we don't have cases uh, of verdicts uh, yet it's dominica grenada Grenada and Jamaica. Um, here we see the cases per country. Peru is the country with more cases, 85 uh, times. Uh, it's a special case because uh, the second country with more cases uh, is, is, is more than the double uh, in, in this case. So it's, a, uh, it's the differences between the first and the second is very notable. Um, the press are located between uh, 7 and maybe 20 cases. Um, in order to identify the mention of the documents, we are going to use natural language processing. Natural language processes, uh, processing is a collection of, of computational techniques which allow uh, the manipulation of language. Uh, in particular, in this case, we are going to use natural language processes to manipulate the uh, textual legal documents. Um, we are not the first with this idea. There have been other projects. Uh, some of them have focused on the analysis and semantic interpretation of, of legal documents, uh, mainly to extract case number, titles, places and dates. There's the turning, turning project which focuses on sentencing, punishment, crime, 
and cite the laws information. Uh, this last bit is very similar to what we are doing, but they, they didn't build a, a network, they just extract the information. And one of the members of the team worked on this project, which uh, extracted mercantile information. So uh, he, what some of the tools we are using come from this experience. And the documents look like this, as you can see, they are heavily formatted, so we can exploit that that uh, formatted to, to extract information. They are in Spanish. Uh, here you have another section. Uh, the language is very formal. It's uh, very from the uh, law uh, part. Um, what we want to do is to automatically label information. Uh, there are different types of information we want to label. Here the important things is, are dimensions to documents. Here mentioned the rule book of the court, uh, it's mentioning an article and and it's doing this very nice thing which is telling us that uh, from now on in the document this uh, document is going to be only known by the rule book, not necessarily the rule book of the court. So this is very important because the next mentions of the rule book we know is actually the rule book of the court. Uh, so we want to, this is the kind of uh, extraction we do. In order to do, do this, we use two phases. The first phase is um, a very generic. Uh, we use uh, this uh, system called GATE, uh, General Architecture for Textual Engineering. And this is the kind of information we extract. Very uh, uniform, very formal. For the case of dimensions, we have to create our own tools. It's an in-house solution which uses uh, regular expressions. And in particular, we needed more flexibility than the one that uh, Kate gave us because we needed to uh, account for several cases of how the, the documents are mentioned. Here's a, a two examples. In some cases, uh, the document and the article are mentioned in this order, document and article, in other cases is article and document. So we need a little bit of flexibility there, so we made our own solution. With this solution, we can extract uh, mentions for uh, all the documents and we can extract, uh, generate our first network. Uh, here we can see our first full network. Actually, it's not a full network because we are only uh, drawing uh, those documents who have more than 10 mentions. So uh, that's what we see here. Because it's a network, we can use uh, metrics for, 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 for networks. Uh, here we are illustrating the use of centrality. We have the average centrality, which is very low, which means the most of the, of the, of the nodes are not really connected. But we see there is one there is one node which has a high centrality, uh, which we can see it here, and this happens to be the American Convention of Human Rights document uh, because it's very important for the argumentation of the court. It's mentioned it multiple times, so it's very connected with all the cases uh, that conform the, the the documents. So. Uh, that that we can see it from from the network. So one thing we can do is extract these popular documents. It's not only the convention, but the rule book of the court and, and all, a couple of more. Uh, so we can extract it and see how the network looks. Uh, so here we have a, a network without these links, and we start to see some interesting things. For instance, these uh, these cases which are isolated. So uh, now the plan is to go and check on these cases and what what's special about them that they are not connected to the network. Uh, if you see, coming back to this, you see there are some links which are in blue. These are mentions of, of documents of cases of the court that mention other cases of the of the court. So we can do a zoom to this and we can draw all the mentions of cases among cases of the court. And we obtain this graph, as you can see, it's very populated, it's very dense. Uh, 
so uh, we want to uh, it's, it's very difficult to analyze because of the amount of, of links in this case there are almost 4,000 links between the documents uh, so we want something more uh, clean if we only focus on the documents which mention uh, at, at least five mentions uh, we obtain these these documents we there are less cases there are more cases less cases than in the previous here we have 280 but we, here we have 100 cases that means that only 103 cases had more than five mentions to other cases of the court but interestingly we can observe some chains of influence here we have this case which includes this one this one to this one this one to this one and this one to this one so this is very interesting we can do the network for for each country we can also do expansions of the articles here this node doesn't represent just a document but represent a specific article of a document so uh, we see that this uh, this uh, notes kind of expand because there are more of them because they are for each document there might be several articles on, on that document uh, we can do these uh, networks for several countries uh, here the important thing to notice is that there is nothing grammatic differently between the 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 networks more or less the the main difference is the number of cases that we notice here we have peru and here we have Barbados, which has only two cases. Well, now, uh, until now, we have these networks, uh, uh, but we still have uh, work to do. One thing we need to do is to evaluate the NLP tools use. Uh, we know that uh, we have the intuition that it's working very, very good, but there are some errors that the system is making and we would like to quantify them uh, identify them and if we can fix them we are very eager to fix them but if we cannot fix it uh, the quantification will be very good in order to to measure the, the, the analysis we can do with the networks we also want to use the time information uh, in order to see how uh, the argumentation or the mentions of the document are evol uh, evolved during through time um, another thing we would like to do is to use the context information right now we are using the whole document uh, and we consider the whole document the same but maybe for uh, to talk about influence from one document into another we should be only focusing on conclusions for instance so right now we have that information it's just uh, we are very close to build these networks where we focus only on the context uh, of the information. Uh, one other thing we, will, we want to do is to pay attention to uh, discourse markers. That was one of the uh, original ideas from the collaboration with Enrique. Uh, right now we know where in, in which part of the document the mention occurs, so now we can go to that bit of the document and check around for discourse markers and start to do uh, research with the discourse markers and see if we can find something interesting. Uh, we also want to do a deeper analysis on the networks. Uh, one idea also Enrique asked us to explore is the influence of sub-law into the, into the cases or into the whole system of the networks so right now we know which documents are mentioned so the next pa the next step is to uh, identify which ones of those documents are sub law which ones are not and uh, try to quantify the that influence of sub law into the into the system uh, something very technical we also have to do is to improve the interactivity of the platform so if you click something it gives you information, relevant information. So that will be doing very soon. Um, that's it for me. Uh, I'm going to be online answering questions. So I guess I see you. I see you in a second. Thank you. Very